Hey, what's going on, Rattlers? So behind this door is one of the coolest herp rooms that you guys have ever seen. I'm at Mike Stefani's place in southern Wisconsin. Mike works with some of the coolest monitor lizards you guys have ever seen, but it's not just the monitors that he works with that makes what's behind this door so amazing. It's also his extremely innovative and creative cage design. So let's go beyond this door and I'm gonna show you guys something that is absolutely downright incredible. I'm Dave Kaufman and these are my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. All right, we're going in. Look at this place. Yeah, yeah. These Whoa. are these are like some. Um, when I get my babies, I raise them up in there. Oh wow! My. Look at that. It goes all the way back there, but we're gonna start right here. Yep. These are my Mertens. Um, this is a, a design. When I put all this stuff together, I had these two tubs, and um, I just put the one tub on top of the other tub, and I was like, "Damn, that would make a great enclosure." Right. So, I actually did it, and like I gotta still paint this yet, but this is the Zupoxy, Polygem Zupoxy. It's a great product. It's uh, you can see it's really hard, and they can't scratch it. It paints real nice, and you could do this is all hand done. It's all hand molded and then carved, textured with uh, sea sponges, and then painted it. So uh, I lined the whole tub with it. Look at this, and you've got oh yeah, I got fire mouse cichlids down there. I got Denisoni barbs from India. They're, they're just they love it. Now, are the monitors eating these guys? Or no, are they... the, the monitors, those uh, the Denisoni barbs and the fire mouse. You know, the Denisoni barbs are like torpedoes. They're really fast. Right. Um, the fire mouse. You know they they know that there's predators in here so they're pretty cautious but what's really cool sometimes and i didn't get it on film yet but on this shelf here dave they'll um they'll sit up in the back there and they're starving and they'll take their tails and they they make a coil like this and then when the zebra danios collect here they just boom 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 pick and them nail off them. one at a time right they but, corral them with their tail yeah like i say my uh my wife is in the fish business so the Deniso I mean the, the, the Zebra Danios, I get pretty cheap. Wow, look at these guys. Yeah, that's the female she just laid. This is Kinktail, she's got a little kink in her yeah, tail. Yeah. She just laid uh, 13 like eggs. This Ew. nest box is uh, all full of dirt, and I got the uh, the old heat pad that goes in between yep, here. Yep. So as you can see here, it's like 95 is the set point. So. From here is 95 and then it goes out, you know, probably into the 80s. And as you can tell, this room is pretty warm in the first place. So everything's usually around 80 degrees. I this figure, you know, uh, if you're going to look at this stuff, you might as well look at a beautiful piece of work, you know. Why not? And, uh, you know, it, it piques people's interest. People who come over and are just like, they can't believe it looks like a zoo. And it's just really cool. And then that's the best when you, when you can see underneath. <laughs> Dude. God, these are dinosaurs. Yeah, and, and uh, when you keep Mertens, if if you put them with just, I mean, they, they'll do fine with just a regular water dish or something, but <clears throat> there's so much behavior you see underwater, all their breeding. Right. Uh, courting, eating, everything, you can see them. They're just, when, when, when they're hungry, they'll never bite you. Right. But when they're hungry, they may mistake you for food. So that, that's the only time I've ever been bit by them. Other than that, they, they, they're really good about biting. They never bite, really. So now how long have you been working with Mertens? Um, I've had these for about five years now. Five years. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you saw the video in uh, that I shot when I was in Australia and we found Mertens in the wild. Yeah, I it did was see that. like the greatest herpetological discovery of, yeah. of my life. I yeah, mean, that's cool. Just, just seeing these guys in the wild was just amazing. So now, you built all of your enclosures down here. This Everything is all is you. all me, me and my sons, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, just look at this. This is yep. incredible. Yep. This is a 300 gallon um, uh, Hagen Laguna tub. I think it's like for koi breeders and stuff. Yeah. This is another one, smaller. And it, of course, this is like their lay area. You can see this uh, crevasse I created yep. here. Yeah. They go in there. This is all insulated board, so it's hot and humid in there. And uh, for for Mertens, I mean these things, 
are capped. There's, it's probably 95 degrees in there. When you open the doors, man, that humidity and the heat, it blasts you. And they'll go sit up under this basking spot that's 150. That's like 155 up there. So, uh, yeah, they love it hot, man. Wow. Real hot. All you right, so let's move on to this next enclosure okay. here. This is uh, Varanus coming out, my big male. Then when, when they breed, they can go back and yep. forth. And then when she's nesting, I cut her out. She's grabbing now. So um, he's cut out. Gotcha. So these are also known as Philippine Golden Monitors. Right. And, and that's kind of the problem with uh, generic names because there's other yellow monitors that sure. people call yellow monitors. So uh, it's, the Latin names always work better. But I agree. This is what I love though, Mike. Like, it's awesome to keep these animals, but a part of keeping these animals is like seeing their natural behavior. And the way you have these cages set up, you could like see what a Merton would behave like in the wild. Yes. It's just so it's exactly phenomenally right. cool. As much as the animals I'm impressed with, the their behaviors in a naturalistic setting, I mean, of course, the stuff, you've been to Australia, so yep. it's close, but it's my mind's eye of what I think it would be like for them. And yeah, it's a whole lot better than looking at, um, you know, com lowest common denominator enclosures, which work, um, just, not for me. That's right. Me. All right. So moving on to the female here. Uh, uh, by the way, the Billy and Sarah are here yes. as well. What's yeah. happening? Had so, to tag along with Dave. That's exactly yeah. right. All right. So here she's is the female. She's grabbing. She's probably two weeks away from laying. So and she normally would come right to me, but yeah, she's she's, she's more interested in yep. finding a place to lay her eggs. The beauty of this is you you know it'd be really hard to find her eggs, but. This back wall from underneath here, I could get in here through here. And oh, I this see. back wall has a big cane heat mat that goes across the whole thing. So like that over there, this wall is 90 degrees and then it, you know, it gets cooler yeah. out. And she usually lays right down here in this corner at like 84 degrees. Perfect, so yeah. you basically control where she's laying by temperature. Yep. Perfect. Yep. She normally, she'd be right here. I don't know. She'd maybe you know, she's going to nice shot of her butt, so we're good. Here's the acanthus uh, oh, yeah. enclosure. Um, this has actually been used for, I raised my peach throats in there. Just a lot of stuff, but it's designated for my ackies now. Fantastic. Um, there's uh, one female there. She just laid. The other female is gravid, and the male, he's usually right out, so... And you just use sand, sand as the substrate. Yeah, well, it's, it's a mix. It's got some sandy soil and some soil-type stuff in there. Sure. It's not straight sand. And again, this side is where the heat mat is. So, if we're lucky, maybe we could catch somebody over here. Oh, well, let's see. And I use this to kind of hold the moisture into the soil. Sure. And there's their damn beetles. I can't stand them things. Nope, nobody there. Nobody there. But um, see all them little beetles? I'm sick of them things. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And that's why you need to go with rainbow mealworms opposed to any other cricket provider out there. Seriously. Yes. What, uh, what do you keep the basking site at? Uh, that's probably about 145 up there. And, you know, total ambient temperatures probably down here is maybe 80. 80? You know, because the room is like usually 82. Perfect. Yep. Nice. All right. Look at this big, beautiful peach throat over yep, here. Yep. Yep. This is my buddy. He's slab a lizard. A lot of people don't realize that peach throats get that big. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You and know? I've actually seen them bigger than this. This is a species I bred, one of the first species I've ever bred. So when I got back into monitors, of course, this is my love. I love these things. So uh, I've gotten three clutches of eggs out of her. So far, none have been good. Um, and these guys are getting up there in age. So I think at the uh, Schomburg show, I'll probably pick up a new pair. There you go. And then we got a little barrel enclosure here. Is yeah. there? What, what this is, this is a thing that I've always wanted to do since I was a kid. Um, but I was more thinking the blue plastic barrels. Sure. So you could have bunches of them. And, you know, the, the, not this stuff, but the cheaper plexiglass kind of molds without cracking. So I was going to do that for like raise up cages and real sure. tropical animals. So I built this to table display at the shows when I bring my animals. But this is all Zupoxy. This is a PVC pipe I heat bent. And it's just Polygem Zupoxy textured to look like bark and then painted, like I said, with my own mind's eye. Um, and then, you know, a little river scene, all the filtration and heaters. 
the heaters are in the filter. Oasi makes um, uh, filters with pre-filters and they have heaters in them so you don't have no dangerous heaters in with your you know your animals turtles whatever. so they heat the water at the same time they're filtering it yeah heat the water at the same time you're filtering it and it is such a great invention because you know especially in the in the uh fish world now people don't want to see the hoses and everything in the cage yeah so they figured it out oasi living waters they're great stuff you should really check them out so okay there's my barrel um all right let's move around the corner example, here okay now here's another that's the other this is a quarter barrel that's a third <laughs> barrel so this is all poly gem zupoxy hand uh sculpted by me and painted textured with sea sponge and as you can see it's just beautiful it really you is so, that uh, looks like the australian outback uh, there you go so you know you you put your little babies in there and people come to the show and rather than seeing deli cubs they're like wow that's really cool maybe i could sell them some poly gem and some lizards so it's a beautiful thing so for right now right in here and believe me building this thing in my mind i got it yeah and then when you start to do everything's okay i'm, I'm no cabinet builder i'm no piano maker but all this rough stuff there, believe me there's you know things are off but it sure. doesn't matter because when you're done with it you know as long as it works it works so what i had real trouble with doing this was getting a piece of plexiglass to go like this without snapping which right. was no problem but then this problem entered the picture so that's when i had to go only so far with it because you got to curve this way and this way so oh, I believe see me i've done a, it it was a lot of work a lot of figuring out ciphering trial and, and error trial and error and but you know what i i don't give up so right well here we go apparently. there's a gill and i in there i have uh two males and a female in there Hopefully I'll get some eggs out of them real soon. Another nice, cool animal and so active and got little clowns. Yeah. They're hilarious. All right, so who's in this one? This one is- This look, is Kimberly Rock Monitors. Look at how awesome this is. I mean, this looks like the Kimberly. Yeah. Which is a region in Australia so where these are found. So you did on this one, huh, Dave? I didn't need no did. caps or, you or did. broken bottles. Yeah. These guys are really cool. There I think know. Kimberly Rocks are amongst my favorite monitors. Yeah. I, you know, I really love them. And then uh, I got the Pilbarensis. Yep. And man, I tell you, they took the cake. I really I love, love them. their flat little heads. Yep. And, and the reason why these have flatter heads is because they're gecko eaters in the wild. And geckos will hide out in the little crevices in the rocks. And so over time, Zoop. these guys developed flatter heads to get into those crevices to get those geckos. And they also use them for when you hatch out babies, they get out of most anything you put them in. That's true. So you gotta be very That's careful. True. There you go, buddy, go back. Be free. Um, oh, so amazing. in the same, I want another feature I'd like to show you on this enclosure is um, the nest box is actually right here. Look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> this is fantastic. This is heated, moist soil. Oh, I got a little piece of slate in there for them to, it holds the moisture in and they burrow under it and lay their eggs in there. Um, but yeah, so you could do a lot with polygem zoopoxy. And it, it just looks great, you know, it's very effective and you yeah. can do a lot of stuff with it. Well, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come over here and shoot this video is because of the design of your enclosures that you built them all yourself you know so many people get these and then they'll go out and they'll just buy uh whatever uh right you know a 24 by 18 by whatever it is and just put a piece of cork bark in there and call it a day yeah you know i love the innovative yeah. cage designs that that you've done and that other people have done and it, like uh so part of this whole thing too i you might notice that there's no water in here right this divot here and that divot there I fill that up with water for them. There you go. That's all they need. Yep. Yeah, because the Kimberley is desert. Mm -hmm. In the, you know the region in Australia where these are found, it's right. called the Kimberley, hence their name, Kimberley Rock Monitor. Yep. And it's a desert. They hardly get any rain. And they could, you know, they get access a uh, microhabitat in there for right. some, you know, humidity. I spray them usually at night. It lasts all through the night, so they get their moisture intake that way. And oh, there you go. Little court. Froggy went a court. So now, what are these guys doing right now? <laughs> That's a, a courtship. You got a, a, so she just laid and uh, 
he's um, so she's probably she you know she may be coming back into a cycle and he's smelling some pheromones. Right, right. Now the answer that I was looking for is they're doing a special hug. Oh, but you know yeah. what you said is good too. Yeah. <laughs> Here we got uh, Varanus pulverensis. Oh yeah. And you can see that's my male there. My uh, my nesting area is. Look at that. My nesting area. Where is he? At her yeah, there she is. My nesting area is there. So I got my heater there, and it heats the soil, keep it nice and moist under here. And um, when I was building it with that heat pad there against this styrofoam, because you put the polygem over styrofoam sure. products, and it was just cooking. So what I did was I took a knife and I carved this out. And if, as you can see here, I, as I carved it out, I get a couple different things going on here. What I get is it holds the moisture in, for nesting and then the heat transfers into the shelf so they could bask sitting here that is fantastic yeah and there's a little water spot yeah of course they have a bowl but yeah so it's and it's just beautiful stuff and I love the pill bars man they yeah just, they blow me away I come down here every morning and we eat crickets or they eat crickets and yeah, yeah. I you eat bagels and yeah. <laughs> you eat cricket bagels? No. So we got the incubator over here and it's full. Oh, it's full. It is way full. Yeah, it's full. Look at that. That's a sweet incubator. Yeah, I made that. So now you're using the water method where you just kind of put maybe an inch or two of water there right. and then elevate the eggs on that platform mm -hmm. there. Yep, Sims containers, you can't beat them. Yeah. I, They're a really I, good product. For, they really are. I mean, I can remember back breeding with monitors, you know, the incubation, you'd get eggs and you'd just destroy them. Right. Uh, and then John come up with this idea here, and it kind of takes all the guesswork out of the, you know, weighing out certain mediums in water. Um, however, I do, with the King Gorums and some of the smaller species, I do use vermiculite one-to-one -to, -one to water because I've had uh, some issues. And something really cool that your fans might want to see. Check this out. Oh, look at this. Check this out. Whoa. Oh, my God. He's alive. He's just not ready to come out yet. That's a little King Gorm, a wild type. Wow. Look at how small he is. Yeah. So he's just going to hang out there for... Yeah. However long. Um, I, again, because of the the incubation methods, these, like I said, I'm going to put these from now on on the uh, uh, vermiculite one to one with water because they take on too much water towards late in the incubation. Sure. They start to sweat and they kind of get constricted in their eggs and they die. So I've lost a lot. So these, when they started to sweat real bad, what I did was I cut the outside egg, like the membrane egg is still intact. Yep but the hard shell is not. And um, so she, that little one there, when she was the same way, did the same thing. She lived like that in the egg for two weeks. One day I checked on her and she was and out she's of the out. egg. She's doing fine. So this one's gonna do the same thing. Um, when they're ready, they're ready. When they're ready, they're ready, right. absolutely. So guys, one of the things that I love about doing these videos is I love people's stories, but I also love seeing their ingenuity and their creativity when it comes to cage design and the animals that they're working with kind of comes secondary to that. So guys, I'm gonna put all of Mike's contact information in the description below while you're down there. Check out our sponsors as well. And if you would like to support this channel, I would really appreciate you checking out my Patreon as well. And guys, there's much more reptile adventures coming up. So as always, thanks for watching and until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.